Right, this is how you set up and map a dictator ECU. First of all, we need to set what type you want the display to be. If you put on numerical, you'll see your fuel maps look like that. Some people it's very difficult to understand. So usually we would just put it on graphic. So then you get a nice graphic of all the things as you're doing them. As you can see the rest of the maps that we're still going to tune for every RPM range. Okay, so your initial startup, you check your timing to make sure where your timing is on 1000 RPM, on 750 RPM, and then your cranking RPM. Cranking RPM should usually be slow. We usually set our cars between 5 and 10. This one you can see is set just on 10 for cranking. Okay. So as you can see we have adjusted this map a bit, what we'd want to do is put all this idling maps so that you would have a stagnant 10 degrees to do your initial setup. Okay, then you'd go into your main setup, set your number of cylinders, set your ignition, that usually if you have uh, coil packs and stuff that is quite important. You can set your rev limiter. This one is, we have it set it quite high. Usually you'd want it to cut the spark. That's usually better. It has a much uh, nicer cut. Then this would be how much fuel must be injected when you turn the key on. So usually a three to four range. That would work in milliseconds. Okay, then over here you could set up your map sensor if you're running a map sensor. This car we're running it with a throttle position switch. As you can see, it is throttle based. And then we've left the this part unticked and the map pipe on the box is open. Okay, next thing we'll look at is the spark top. This car is running a single coil with a distributor. Um, there are other options for, I think, wasted spark. Yes, wasted spark. That would be if you had a crank angle sender, but this is not applicable with the dictator standard. Your dwell control, that would be the, the time it is charging for the coil. Um, and then your charge time. This is quite important on some coils. Generally, it would be between two to three. Uh, most times unless otherwise specified then this trigger angle is quite important as you're going to see when we start the car you can move this left to right to bring the timing to where you want it at your 10 degrees so when you check it here it's 10 degrees and when you check it on the actual car it's also 10 degrees so we're going to use that right now um, then these are the extras there is extra wiring in the dictator um, you can set up these uh, other functions or you can set it as a, a launch control we just have it inactive for now and um, the fuel pump priming that's if you've got quite a big fuel system generally three to four seconds is sufficient uh, for it to build up pressure um, and then this is also quite important this is how you're going to set up your maps so on this car we're actually going to change it to a thousand rpm and it's going to ask you to if you're going to change them if the car has been mapped before don't change the setting otherwise it will it will damage your map okay and then your load sites we would usually tune them on 17 load sites it will give you much finer tuning okay we'll just wait for it to do that Right, uh, on your next setup, this would be if you have a VTEC where you would set your VTEC. That would be the obviously the, the RPM it starts to work at and the RPM it stops at. Um, then this load point would be how much throttle has to be applied for it to be activated. And the stereosis is that's like if it's uh, activating prematurely then you can set it on that. Okay, the next thing is you can set up your anti-lag over here. Um, obviously you have to have it wired. Um, then this part is if you have an idle control valve set um, that would be your target you can turn that up or down then you would sort of see where it's running 
when your by your actual idle percentage when it's running it would come down to say 20 percent then you would set your minimum position to a little bit less your maximum position to a little bit more and then you'd set your startup position to get the car to rev as you start it um, the idle response is usually set that pretty close to the lowest number so that as the it comes below that number then the idling will, will kick up again so that the car doesn't cut out okay the next important part would be a sensor setup um, this would be where you calibrate the TPS throttle position switch you can see we'll do it on this car so that would be the closed position we would accept that then we'll put the car full throttle and we'd accept the full throttle now the car is technically technically mapped you can see it's got the full hundred percent to two percent or one percent which is quite sufficient okay um, then here I would have your water temperature setup you would actually set the actual resistance values you would measure at this constant temperature usually would start on say 20 degrees you would take a multimeter to measure that those figures in ohms and then enter your ohmage um, this car we have already adjusted it so you can see it's actually on 27 at the moment there are some user settable ones that are preset for the uh, most common sensors um, the same goes with the air temperature same sort of thing you can set it and it also has a preset pull down menu the next thing would be your your trigger input this would be of the angle of which it uh, uses the trigger to fire would be on either the the rising edge or the falling edge so you would set that here if your timing wheel was not in the correct position and then this would be for a home setup for a multi for a 60 minus 2 setup and then this would be for also for a 60 minus 2 or um, wasted spark setup okay and then the, the last thing would be your compensation this is the obviously the compensation for your battery voltage usually when your car is running would be on 12 or 13 volts you shouldn't have any uh, figures there as the battery goes down it will richen the car up to add um, extra fuel uh, this would be your cold start um, you can see we've already sort of set it you can see we can adjust the percentage of fuel this percentage is what is programmed into the box so if you've got one millisecond on idle when it's cold it will add 10 percent of one millisecond 36 percent of one millisecond see that one is actually too low that should be closer to 50 percent or 60 percent because that at that sort of temperature it would require a lot more fuel and as it goes down as it warms up it requires less um, this is also compensation we have taken it out but we do have an air temperature sensor um, that would basically when the car starts getting very hot you'd add enrichment the next thing would be your throttle pump control uh, you would set your increase how much uh, percentage of the fuel that is injected um, this would be the decay is how quickly it takes that extra fuel away uh, the dead band is basically how responsive it is um, generally I set it quite low on a naturally aspirated on a turbocharged car you would have to make it a bit larger and then this is a percentage of throttle that you're not going to use the um, accelerator pump okay so as you can see that's pretty much how you set it up and you can have your main page so we'll we'll have a look it shows you all your figures here you can see all the air temp and water temp um, your potentiometer if you have one your battery voltage um, then we'll check out the fuel maps see it has been converted so now we will see if we can get this car to run properly with this map okay, right let's start the car okay you can see now the car is running you can see the yellow dot is where the position is see if I rev it moves and you can see this is very important your cursor position you have to sort of make sure when you're tuning that you're keeping the cursor in the center as you rev higher you can see it will go up then it's going into the next rev range you see as you move it over it will keep on going so you have to make sure that the red dot if you are tuning on the red dot you need to make sure that you are in the red dot okay so it, it works on the RPM as well as the map position okay now we're going to 
to set up the main setup to, con to set up the trigger angle as you can see on our ignition maps we have got the timing set to about 10 degrees we'll set it to 15 to be easier and you can see the rpm so take it to the previous map set it to 15 so on idle now it will be 15 degrees okay we're going to check with our timing lock as you can see it's on 33 degrees so we would have to adjust the timing You can't see the mark. 15 degrees. Yeah, okay, here we will adjust the main setup. We need to make the timing slower, so we will decrease. As you can see we brought it down. We brought it down enough that the timing is 15 degrees. 